Okay, so I have some weird random stuff. Like this thing, I decided I'm gonna go closer. I was watching some videos today about, um, it was about astrology stuff I'll talk about in a second. But I, so now I keep noticing like where people put their cameras and stuff. And there's people that were like way up, like, cause the top of their forehead would be gone. And then they would be, there was, uh, there's a lot that I, I feel like that they take up this much space. And there's like usually some kind of picture or something behind them or a picture here or bookshelf. That's popular. But it seems like that a lot of people come up and are more like this. And I was like, well, maybe that's better because then I can move my little table way closer. I thought, you know, maybe it was nicer to have something to look at, you know, besides just the person. And, you know listening to me talk <laughs> I mean at this point if you are listening to me you've got to like listening to me talk because that's all I do <laughs> I don't do anything else uh, it's one of my favorite things to do um but the thing that was interesting too in the astrology ones is that I it was about the sun moon and rising and what I had been noticing a lot lately is that every time that I would listen to a Sagittarius one that I, it was completely like going exactly with my life and I'm Sagittarius ascending. So, um, and I'm cancer. Um, I guess it's so it is what you're born into, whatever that month is, that's your sun sign. So that's what most really everybody always knows their sun sign. But so your moon I won't say it right. It's probably where the moon was in alignment. <laughs> uh, um, and then the ascending is where it was rising in the east. So you have to have your birth time and your um, city and state, you know, wherever, longitude, latitude kind of thing in the time. And then it will tell you the other two. And so um, there was a lot of explanation about it. So the, the sun, I like this one girl, what she said, because she said the sun is like your outline of who you are. Cause I had a lot of things that as a cancer, I was like, uh, um, you know, I'm very much, uh, you know, a, a homebody. I like to be, um, I don't, I don't need a crowd to feel good or anything. I like to cook. I love to cook. Yesterday, I keep making this stuff that is so good. Yesterday, I was like, okay, I got to thank the energy that brings me these skills to cook this stuff because it's fucking good. Um, okay, so then the moon. Oh, see, I was lost on the moon thing, I guess. And I'm a moon in Libra, and I don't even know that much about that sign, but it doesn't seem to have as much significance it is kind of like um, your dark side, maybe, she said. I can't remember. I You'd have to look her up or there, look up other ones. Um, but then the ascending, that is what colors you in. That's what makes you who you are. You know, if this is annoying that it's this close, then somebody can always just tell me. I don't know, because now I probably just keep looking at myself more. I gotta get it aligned. I do still have some type A. Didn't like completely sterilize it out of me. Um, it just made a lot of stuff when I got my brain injury. It made a lot of stuff that I thought was important seem very unimportant. Just it's like why? What do we hold on to such stupid stuff sometimes? You know. But anyways, back to the thing. So. Um, the ascending is more about your thing, uh, of who you are and your mission and stuff. And I had seen another person um, talking about it, and they were saying your ascending um, sign, that will give you more of a blueprint of who you are, uh, what you're here for, your purpose, and stuff like that. And, you know, even if you think like astrology and stuff is like a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It, there's something to it. There's something to how the moons and planets and stuff align. And if you start looking into it for yourself about your own 
self, you will find that there's, there's stuff that is real about it. <clears throat> it's not just a bunch of mumbo jumbo nonsense. There's, there's significance to it. And, um, oh, and then also, um, well, there was a few things cause I remembered after I stopped the last one, which I'm having so many problems with downloading. Sometimes the downloading is just as weird. It will download it in different, that's oh, weird. But, um, when I was talking about, um, the dog thing, you know, and a dog getting so attached to you, you know, and to them, you know, I, who knows what their perception is of master or, you know, what you are to them. You're very significant, you know, you're everything to your dog or cat. I'm not as much a cat person. I like cats. I'm not a cat hater. I'm just, I, I get more of a dog relationship. But, um, you know, that they, it means something to them. You're important to them. And, um, so when I was, um, together with him, I probably have talked about this before, but so we got this rescue dog and the guy, it had just been him and his dog for this dog's entire life. It was just him and his dog and he took his dog everywhere. And then he got a girlfriend with a little kid. So he just gave the dog away. And um, it really affected the dog. It was just really, really sad. And um, Jim could never, he, he never really could try, like he had a problem with feminine energy. And so then I was like, man, I don't know, you know, when that girl moved in and she was so scared of him because he was big, he was scary looking. He was um, part mastiff. He was really, really cool looking dog. The guy had found him. It was like a litter, a wild litter, or some litter that was just left somewhere. And it was one of them. And he was part mastiff and he was super cool looking because he was, he was like thin and he had a bunch of different colors. Cause like his legs were polka dotted and then he had other markings. He was really a very individual looking guy. But he had like a coldness in his eyes. Like, don't fuck with me. And, um, and he would growl, and you know, and he would warn you. He never like bit me or anything, but like if I tried to give him a bath and stuff, he was like, fuck that. He, he always let me know he didn't like me. But my husband at the time, oh my gosh, he was so protective of him and loved him. And I feel like I've talked about this before because um, he was uh, epileptic and, uh, it, and I had a swim pool at the time this was before. Um, I lost everything. Yeah, because, um, yeah, it was when I was together. I got the brain injury. This is how whacked out I was. I got the brain injury as I was ending a relationship. And then I was already in another one by the time I was diagnosed. I think it was one of those people who just, I didn't like have to be with somebody to break up with somebody. But there was just always another one there, another one there. It was like, fuck, it was like a... a conveyor belt of men there's always one that's there ready to grab hold and um you know these years that I've been single I've really gotten to know myself and um you know I like myself better than most of the people I've been with liked me at all they always wanted to change me I, and this is where I get the idea of like if you like the shell but you don't like what's inside don't don't take the shell and then try and change what's inside. The shell is, it's just a shell, you know? And you've got to see what's inside. That's what you got to fall in love with. And there's still a lot of people that are, um, that they don't do that. They are very, um, I don't know, visual and cut off from their spiritual. I don't know. Um, but anyways, it's important. You need to like what's on the inside more than what you like on the outside. Just a little thing for a lot of guys. Okay, so also, um, okay, so Jim, the dog, I felt really, really bad when um, uh, that guy just, I, I saw how it affected him his whole life. And then, um, 
and then my ex took him when he went and I didn't get to see him. And it was, it's been something that is, um, like tugged at my heart for ever since. And I just feel like Winston, when Winston passed, Winston went to go be with Jim. That's what I feel like. Because I feel like the ex did not, um, I just feel like it probably wasn't a good outcome for Jim in the long run. It makes me really sad. But um, oh, speaking of gyms, so I don't know. I keep getting a whole bunch of um, gym videos popping up. Jim Carrey motivational speaking videos popping up. It's like there's a whole bunch of people posting these motivational speeches or something because I keep having a bunch pop up and all these different things. Some of them I've heard like bits and pieces of the same speech, I think. And some I've heard... Um, I don't even know if I've heard the whole speech yet, but a lot of people have different parts and some people put uh, clips of him talking and then some people put just like, I don't know, they do like the little, whatever he's talking about, they show it, you know, in um, a scene. One I even saw where somebody draws everything as he says it. But anyways, there's a whole bunch. And, um, he, I, I really liked a lot of the stuff that he was talking about. And I feel like, you know, I, I think he, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the guy. I, but I feel like he understands things kind of on the same level I do. Like on this, some of the stuff he was talking about. Um, anyways, those were uh those were really good and it seemed like there was something specifically i wanted to talk about one of them what was it i always get way too many things that i start talking about and i start forgetting everything i'm talking about um because there was more things too and since i did my other video so early in the morning now i it's it's only noon this is quiet I was watching this guy, I like this guy. I found him at the beginning of the uh, quarantine and his name is Carl Vernon and he's a British guy. <laughs> he's he's really funny. And the stuff he says about like things, you know, and just the ridiculousness of it. I just like, he points out the ridiculousness of everything and he, he's funny. So if you look him up, he's, he's um, I, at the beginning, I would watch him like every day. He would put like a five or six minute thing. And um, it would always like make me chuckle. And I would be, um, oh, he just puts you in a better mood. So um, it's Carl Vernon. V-E-R-N-O-N, I think. But his are funny. Any of the gym care, I mean, there's like a zillion of those right now. So unless they're old and I just got in one of those things where you do, they just keep sending you a whole bunch. Um, cause I've got, I got a lot and, um, oh, what was the other thing I was going to talk about? There's been so many things. Um, cause some of the movies, I, those popped back in my head. One of the movies while I was gone that I watched was, um, this couple who went, a scuba diving and then they went I, I don't know if, the, if it was a third world country kind of place or something I mean it was a lot of safety features it didn't seem but they went out and they left this one couple out in the middle of the ocean and I don't even know when I I know this happened in true life this movie wasn't the true life story I mean they kind of were making it seem like it but at the end you can always tell because they update you on what's going to go on if it's really a true story. And I know some true stories, you know, they kind of beef them up a little, make them a little more exciting on the boring parts. So you don't ever know like the whole thing and then and, and everything's by perception or whatever. But they oftentimes make you think, you know. And that one just made me think like, no fucking way am I going to go out on some fucking boat and that was wacky. Go out in the middle of the fucking ocean? No, thanks. No, uh, -uh. And, and then I'm going to go under the water with the sharks and whatever else. Because I, I believe shit lives in the water. I think we want to think like there's sharks and stuff. But there's, I told you, there's stuff that was living in the forest. There's stuff living down in the deep seas, too. 
that i mean it's been seen ships coming in and just going into the water i mean i think octopuses are aliens they're smart as shit they aren't they aren't just like uh, you know some stupid thing i've seen where people have caught him and put him in a jar the octopus can open the jar from the inside and get itself out that's intelligence you know i mean you just think about us our size something being that much bigger than us putting us inside something and putting us in a captivity of some sort where you have to get up to the top to get yourself out you have to screw the thing off that's a lot that's a lot of stuff to try and do and um i don't know i just i find it fascinating that they would do that i think that a lot of people would just probably sit down in the jar and piss their pants and wait to be eaten by the giant you know because isn't that what we do we we capture these smart creatures and then we eat them i can't stand eat octopus anymore but i'm horrible because i still like calamari so i don't know probably squids are smart too but i definitely think there's creatures out there and i think that there's also creatures out there that are um from another time and space, you know, the, um, they are, um, what are those called? Like not actually dinosaur priest. Well, that'd be prehistoric, but no, um, well, old things. I don't know. Maybe it would be prehistoric, but I'm talking about creatures like, like the Loch Ness monster. Like how old is that guy? I think it's real. I always thought it was real. I used to be fascinated by it when I was little. I'd want to see stuff about it all the time. And I was like, oh man, I got to go find this Loch Ness Monster. I want to see the stuff that is magic. I want to, because I feel it in here. But for some reason, you know, feeling it in here sometimes just doesn't feel like enough. Like you want to see the magic, you know, you want to see a fairy. You want to see a, a Loch Ness Monster, a Bigfoot. Wow, so many people can't even believe in Bigfoot. And, you know, they need to see it. I know there's Bigfoot. And I don't really need to see it. But I know there is one. Or, or there's a bunch. Not just one. There's tons. They're, they're a species. They're a, you know, a, like we're human beings. Uh, they are whatever they are. Sasquatch. That's what we name them. Who knows what they call themselves. I doubt it's Sasquatch. That's kind of rude, isn't it? Sasquatch? Oh no, it sounds kind of rude. I don't know what it means. Maybe it's actually kind of more like an Indian name, Sasquatch. Because there's a lot of, like I live in Washington State. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of places that are named um, from, in, I guess, kept the names that Indians named it. Or whatever you want to call them, all the stupid fucking shit that they gotta have everybody called a certain thing. American Indian, I guess. I don't know what's appropriate anymore. They change it so much. I don't think I get as um, easily offended, especially as some whole entire groups. Like, is a whole entire group offended? Like, everybody? Or just the one who wants to start trouble? Like, I think there's plants. From the government and all these different groups that they are the ones who are saying well ah oh, we're offended change that syrup name change that football team you know all the bullshit <clears throat> i don't know i don't know that any of that shit's real but um there was another thing that i was going to say too um what was it so i was sleeping that was another reason i was like oh she's snoring I don't have anything to do. I'm sick of trying. I keep changing channels and changing channels. Well, no, not changing channels. Because I've been on YouTube watching those things. But I keep, like, going from thing to thing. Like, ugh. I'm going to have to go find a movie. Yesterday I was watching, um, I watched some of that, um, Travelers. And there were some other things I was like, ugh. That's irritating. I don't, I don't believe that. Um, one of the things that drives me crazy is, um, 
when they have whole groups die and then the whole group of travelers comes in it's like well so if if the whole building blew up and everybody got killed but then these three come out and they're totally different why isn't anybody think that's weird or are they pretending like these people weren't there i don't know there's just too many unanswered uh, things in it that don't make any sense um Oh, but after that, I watched this sh this movie. Um, it was called, um, it was North Sound or something. I'm horrible with names of things. I should look them up before, but it was this movie and um, it was really hard to um, really understand for sure what, the thing was, but there was some kind of a paranormal force. So you couldn't really get like, were they trying to say it was aliens? Because for a while they were saying that it was a frequency sound coming from the turbines. It was making people think and hear things and stuff like that. But then there started being actual phenomena happening, you know, like it was, um, it was kind of like a magnet would suddenly come on like this. It, this is why I think it was like some sort of craft would come and a light would come down. It would be like a magnet and everything would be magnetized and go. And, um, that one, and whatever was this species or being or whatever they would want, um, they could inhabit you. seems like kind of if you were weak, like if you were at a bad place, you were sick or something like that, they could inhabit you. And then they would get you to feed them. <laughs> Did you ever see that, that one movie? <laughs> I used to love it when I was a kid, that plant. And it would be like, feed me, <gasps> feed me. <laughs> and the guy would talk to his plant and stuff and he would bring them humans and feed the plant these humans. And it would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> that was a, I like that movie, but that's what this thing was kind of like, and it won't want him to feed him. So he would, um, keep bringing these things. At one point he was bringing his niece. <laughs> it was kind of like, here, you can have her because they get kind of in these, um, hypno hypnotic states or something. Creepy. We're dealing with all these hypnotic states right now. Ooh, hopefully you don't start just, you know, wrangling us up and feeding us to this being. I mean, that's, that's how creepy this, um, brainwashing thing is that people just don't, they're just out of their minds. They don't even know what's what. <laughs> they just believe what they're told. I swear to God, someone could come on the TV and say, get your guns and go and arrest all your neighbors that are, uh, I don't know, maybe they call us white supremacists or because that's a big trigger word or racist, any kind of thing that goes against one of the groups that always has someone in it that is probably from the CIA, really. So anyways, in this movie, um, I don't really remember what happened, but I, I like the supernatural stuff. I like to watch the movies that make you think about stuff because some of it's disclosure. Some of it's stuff that's we know for sure, and then some of it is what other people see or think or whatever their perception. So I, I find it interesting. I don't get scared of that stuff. Some people get really scared of it, like they can't watch an alien movie. That well, unless I guess we kill all the aliens, they can watch those. But the sure the hell can't. They're scared of. There's a lot of people scared of everything. Literally scared of everything. I just heard, oh, when I was watching that Carl Vernon, he was just talking about, I, I'm kicked off Twitter, so I can't <clears throat> see anymore. But I take it as like, okay, it's time to move on. I've got to get focused on something else. Um, you know, I'm trying to organize my shit. So, um, that they um, are on there and they're saying they're never going to give these up. They can't, they can't imagine ever not having one on for the rest of their lives. I told you, 
This is, is turned in, well, it's not only a phobia, but it is turned into, it's like their little safety blanket. Like, a, I've seen people leave and not have, a, like, a, a baba or whatever. They always have little names. But something that their baby has got to have to feel safe. And they'll fucking melt down. They will freak out. They, they've got to have this thing. And uh, that's what these are turning into for these people. It, and to me, it's like, well, why wouldn't you, if you were that dependent to feel safe by this, then why would you not want to take control of that? You know, take control of your own fears. Take control of what you want from life. I mean, you want to live being scared of germs? Oh my God, they're not a new thing. You you were dealing with them when you were a tiny little baby. And not only that, germs are the perfect thing to take out the weak and the sick. It is, it is like the same way, you know, like an environment has to all stay in balance. You know, germs are, um, they're a positive thing in our life. And they help us build immunity and stuff like that. And, you know, you saw, well, we didn't see it. And we were told. And we can only, it only makes sense. But who knows? Because everything is a fucking lie. But when the missionaries and stuff like that, so if they came from a place that had gone through different illnesses, and then they were going to try and, confront these tribal people and tell them, you know, oh, you are not civilized. You have to come with us. We're going to take your kids. We're going to put them in schools. We're going to teach them. You're going to go out you're going to go work. And then we're going to, you know, all the bullshit. So then they were getting them all sick and killing them because these people didn't have the germs. They didn't have any kind of immune system built up to what these people were carrying. <clears throat> and whole tribes were wiped out at these times. You know, and in that case, germs weren't very good for them. But, you know, um, we kind of, we, we don't want to be that isolated that, um, that a little germ can come in and kill us, you know. And I think that is a, a really good proponent or um, to promote going out and interacting with lots of different people in lots of different places, you know, uh, don't make your life small, make your life bigger. Don't be scared of something that's little, make your life bigger. You have to, you have to do that. You have to take control of your brain, of your mind, of your own fears and stuff. That is, you have to get control. Uh, um, what did I say? Oh, it was ruminate when I was talking about earlier. You get those thoughts that just go, 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 go. Rum, you ruminate. You just go over them and over them and over them and over them. Beat them to fucking death. And um, that, those kinds of things, those are what you need to get control of. If you've got, uh, you know, it's like a record player going in there and it gets stuck on some kind of... Um, message and it's just going around and around and around and around get control of it take it however you need to do it you need to visualize yourself tying the thought up and throwing it away you just need to go in and cut it off or whatever you got you, you've got to take control of your mind your thoughts your emotions and stuff or they will get out of control i mean look how easy they were to control it's only been a fucking year you can't go for the rest of your, you need this on your face for the rest of your life to feel safe. That, that is, oh, I mean, I don't want to say things to put somebody down, but that is very, very weak minded thinking, you know, to think that, I mean, what do you do when a babe, when you have a kid who has become dependent on you know, carrying their rattle or some blanket or whatever, you know, it becomes just totally worn out and ratty. I mean, at some point, 
Are they gonna carry it into first grade, second grade? Are they gonna carry it to the first sleepover? You know, at some point they have to figure out how to feel safe without it, right? Well, that's what people need to do. You've gotta figure out how to feel safe. What would your mom do if you were in that place? You know, she would be trying to get you to, you know, we'll just, let's just leave it at home while we just go to the store. Let's just leave it at, why don't you just leave it in your room while we watch this movie? You know, you, you get them to do, like, separate little by little. So use techniques like that, you know? It, however you got to get yourself to feel safe again. Because this is ridiculous. It does not help you. It is only restricting oxygen. It is not, um, it's not going to keep you healthy and safe <laughs> at all. It's doing the opposite. And these people that have got the whole freaking boy in the bubble shit. Well, when they keel over suddenly, some of us will know why. Others will probably call it, you know, some sort of flu. I don't know. It's just, a, you know, it's, it's sad to watch people just, I don't know. Is it giving up? Just give up so easily? To just, you know, this is life. I, I, we're out now Gator Boy is saying we we won't return to normal till the end of 2022. Really? Are you psychic? Or do you have control of this? I'm looking at my TV. Because <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, have, I'll create my own normal. You know, maybe we can't go to restaurants like... <laughs> one uh, in England, I guess, that you have to get your vaccinations. You have to have a thing that says you've had them. Then you have to um, get a test, be cleared a negative in that test. Then a couple days later, get another test. Then if you are negative on that one, you get a couple, uh, a couple days at the pub. Well, I call that control. I don't call that something for my health. I take perfectly good, fine health of myself. I don't need them to tell me how to take care of myself. And besides the fact that they're so wishy-washy with all this stupid bullshit. It's just, none of it adds up. And I don't understand why people don't question it more. They just, you know, accept any... They, they cannot, they have tricked us into controlling us. You can't really have control of a, a, a sovereign being. We are independent beings. We are, I mean, we are an energy source inside of an avatar. But we claim this as our sovereign being. This is what I am in control of right now. This, you know, I don't have control over anything out here. I don't have control over what's going to happen with her. I don't have control if my house is going to burn down today. I mean, I could die. Um, but I think that that is a set before you're even born. Like you, you're born with your own expiration date. So... And dying, I've said before, that's a transition. It's not like the end of me. It is the end of this particle of me, this this fractal of my being, this this story, this my hair sticking out. Um, this this um, like it's like a fictional character story you know, of their experience. Well, bi biographical, really, because it's a real person. I really exist. I really exist because I have an effect on my surroundings, on other people. And so I have an existence, you know what I mean? So, but this character will end you know, and I'll go develop other characters and live their experiences. 
and you know that adds more into the library of who I am really outside of this that is presented at this time and place on this planet you know what I mean so I, I don't understand this so much fear I understand the pain of loss and you know I understand it when my when I'm like you know so you know who cares about death to my kids and they're just like mom I don't want you to die and they think you know I'm just I keep hearing that word it is a French um thing but I can't I can't pull it far or close enough to say it but there's like an expression yeah I can, it gets louder but I still I can't pull it forward um but yeah, they think I'm just like too like wishy-washy or something. But, you know, I, I just don't think that we should be fearing it. When I was a kid, I feared uh, what it was going to feel like. Like, oh my gosh, it's going to hurt. Oh, um, And I am terrorized by movies where they drag it out. I think that's horrible. Um, but I don't think the ending of this person is a bad thing. I mean, she has to have a beginning and an end to be a conclusion, to be who she is. Otherwise, you are always changing and stuff that would always change. But the bigger part of me will take this part of her to add to them. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting a little too woo, out there for some people to understand what I'm talking about. But it does. It all has to do with, uh, you know, energy and uh, your energy and your combining. Like, your higher self is still a part of you. And when you start listening, I mean, they're talking loud and clear. They have their fingers in all parts of your life it almost it sometimes it almost feels like that you're the puppet that they are really controlling you and whatever they're telling you you know oh go do this go do that or whatever like they like you're the avatar in a video game and they're up there controlling you or a puppet you know but that it's all coming from them and it's when you're not connected to them that you feel like it's all coming from out there. But that's, I don't see it that way. I see it a lot more like, you know, how much control do I even have? Or am I just my higher self playing around, playing this part, trying on, you know, like sometimes I like to go in and try on clothes and come up with outfits. I've got a whole little section in my closet right now of outfits that are like, well, it's hard for me to remember anyways. I swear to God. I can get clothes out of the dryer. Oh, i got to put clothes in the dryer. I can get clothes out of the dryer and I don't even remember how I put them together. Like, oh, I think I've talked about before because I think I, I need animals or something. I probably need, uh, I probably need a lot of things, honestly. But, whatever. I'm happy. Stella's happy. She's snoozing away. I didn't even give her any medicine today. And she was snoozing away last night too. Um, there was another thing I wanted to say. There's always another thing. As soon as I finish and I start downloading, I'll be like, oh, that's what I wanted to say. Oh, I wanted to say that too. Oh, I should have said that. Um, but I guess that's probably why all of mine just kind of run into the other one. I keep watching the time. It's already 39. My other one was fucking 103 or something. 103 or 106. I don't know. It was long. So I probably shouldn't make this one as long. And <laughs> people are going to start going like, boy, that poor girl. She's really lonely. Somebody really needs to get her out of the house. Um, and 2022. Sorry, dude. That's not happening. People are going to fucking get their shit together. <laughs> way before that I, I say that things are going to start changing but there is that this these people they're going to be out there for a while 
there's gonna be some people who are real scared of shit. Just because even once they know rationally what is going on, there's still fear is something you have to actually conquer. You have to overcome it. You have to fight it like it's a beast inside of you. You know, it will eat you up. It will take over your life. Like it will destroy you. So, okay. Can't let anybody know. I'm too lonely. <laughs> so I should probably stop talking. I'm gonna fix my hair first so I can leave it on a, I don't know. I don't know if it ever looks okay. Um, okay, so again, have a great day. It's been still sunny, but it's fucking freezing. Well, it's not really freezing. It's like in the early 40s or low 40s, but it feels like it's in its 20s or something. And Stella keeps trying to drag me out. It's like, girl, I've got nothing to do out there. I'm going to go just sit outside and freeze to death. I'm sitting in here on a hot pad. I got my heat up. I'm about to turn the damn oven on. <laughs> I don't know. I hardly have any firewood left now, especially because I was giving, I was sharing it with those, those people, but I don't know. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.